Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a k-means clustering with PySpark. Let's get started. So first off, uh, we have some data, uh, some hacking data. So let me take a look at our, uh, it's called hackdata.csv. And we can see here that we have uh, a bunch of different data here, and I probably need to import this and let you guys look at it in a little bit cleaner aspect. But basically it has uh, some session times uh, and some logs, okay? So Kali Linux traces, uh, server corrupted, uh, pages corrupted, location, and then we have this um, uh, typing speed of users, okay, as well as their location. Now we're going to use this data to kind of look at and see how many hackers there were um, on the server. So first off, let's go in and get started with some of our basic imports. So from, pi, you know, and maybe let me uh, zoom in a little bit for you guys. Uh, from PySpark uh, SQL, we're going to import a uh, Spark session. Um, and also for those of you that are new to this, if you guys are using um, Google Colab as we are now, um, you need this basic um, import structure in order to get your uh, PySpark up and running. Um, you can look at previous videos that we've talked about to to get this up and running, but this is the new form of the code, just kind of putting it in as a nice chunk. Um, so we're going to do the Spark session. Now we're going to instantiate the Spark session. So we'll create a Spark session um, dot builder uh, dot app name, and let's call this uh, number of hackers uh, dot get or create um, <clears throat> and while that's running let's go on and also uh, import our data so we'll create up some uh, data frame here spark dot read dot csv um, as we saw earlier um, this is it just has a basic header file so uh, hack data dot csv uh, header is true, infer schema is true. Can run that and uh, have an extra parenthesis here. So let's go on and also maybe um, take a look at said data. So df.show, let's only show the first two rows. And again, here we can see that we have mainly numerical data. We have uh, some location data. And um, we're going to probably, let's go in and maybe drop that. Um, and we'll, we'll deal with that here in a minute. Um, let's also go on and uh, take a look at our description. And I don't like the way that it's showing this. So we're going to do two pandas uh, to show this. Uh, and maybe we'll do um, round by two. Uh, it still didn't do it for us. That's fine. Uh, so we can see that we have our basic um, uh, descriptive statistics here. Again, we have uh, some issues coming out with our location. Uh, we have a very large margin with our um, with our typing speed, everything else seems to be relatively small, except for maybe our uh, our bytes transferred in here is actually quite large as well. Um, so we may want to uh, check again. This is about the standard deviation, so there's quite a bit of variation in those two. Um, so let's go on and get things started with our basic imports. And I'm going to do this. I know that we should usually be doing all of our imports. Um, at the beginning, but what I'm doing is just as we're coming up and going through this session, I'm going to just import them for now, and we can always um, clean things up later. So from PySpark uh, dot ML dot linear algebra, let's import our vectors. We also want from PySpark dot ML dot feature, we want to import our vector assembler, and uh, let's go on and do a bit of a a cheat here and do uh, df.columns because I know we're going to need it here in just a second. <coughs> so let's go on and create our feature columns here and um, I'm going to just grab this whole thing uh, and paste it in there but I'm going to uh, actually cut out location because we don't want it. 
Um, so let's go on then and create up our assembler here and we have our vector assembler uh, we have our input columns in here and this is going to be our uh, feature columns we have our output column and that's just going to be called uh, features because that's what we want it uh, outputted to so the next thing that we're going to do is go on and create up a uh, kind of a final uh, data frame here and we'll do something like assembler dot transform uh, with our data frame and from here um, we need to make sure because we're going to actually be doing um, a, a k-means uh, clustering on this and so we need to know that we need our data to be scaled so let's go on and actually uh, put in and scale our data from pyspark.ml.feature we want to import our standard scaler so let's go on and create up our scaler uh, standard scaler we want our input input column in here to be features uh, our output column here to be um, let's call it scaled feet and I'm gonna starting to get a little crowded here so let's put those down there uh, and then we want to make our uh, width standard deviation to be true that keeps popping up there true and then uh, with uh, mean to be false okay so this is going to be creating up our scalar uh, and then this is going to be our output column for our uh, future reference in here um, and let's go on and also create up our scaled model here uh, and so scalar dot fit on our final uh, data frame uh, and we also need to uh, make this uh, viable because we also we we modeled it and then we now we need to actually transform the data itself so let's call this our uh, uh, cluster data frame because uh, it's what we're actually going to be doing it on so we'll do our scaled model dot transform on our um, final data frame and then we need to go on and import in our um, k-means uh, model and so we'll do from pyspark.ml.clustering we're going to import our k-means okay and make sure um, a lot of times people will get an error make sure that it's capital K capital M means with an S in there people have a tendency to kind of forget them when they do this um, and then let's go on and create up also an evaluator and actually I'll just put these in the same line here so from pyspark.ml.evaluation um, we want to import in here uh, a clustering evaluator okay and this is going to help us um, be able to kind of select up our k-means now there's a couple different ways that you can do this but we're going to be using um, the silhouette um, evaluator okay this is kind of becoming a more uh, common way of evaluating your models so we'll say eval is equal to our clustering evaluator and this is going to take in a couple different columns so we'll do a prediction column and here is going to be called prediction and then we'll do um, uh, uh, features call is going to be our scaled features okay and then we'll have our metric name is going to be silhouette and then we'll also have our distance measure and this is going to be our um, well, measure uh, we want squared Euclidean ok 
okay? And that will run our and create our evaluator. Now, what I'm going to do, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of coding in here so that we can kind of iterate through um, quite the range of um, k-means um, algorithms. Okay, so we'll do something like from k2 all the way up to maybe I don't know k k10 or something like that. So let's uh, so that's a number of clusters. Okay, so. Uh, so silhouette uh, score here uh, and then we also want to let's create up a little bit of a pretty print here so do print um, uh, so because we want this to kind of look like a little bit of a report so uh, uh, silhouette scores for uh, K uh, means clustering uh, and then let's give it a nice kind of header title here. And then we're going to do two things. One, we're going to say uh, the model. We'll give it a tab score. Uh, and then let's say a tab again. And then we'll do, um, let's see. Uh, so we'll do two fives there. So again, we, we're wanting this to actually look kind of clean, okay? Um, so it'll look kind of like a slight table format. Again, we can do all different types. We can even export it later on to maybe a markdown file or something. But let's just say that you want this just to print nicely. So we'll do for, um, let's say 4K, okay, for its, so however many Ks it is, um, in range 2 to 11, because we want it all the way up to 10. Uh, we'll call this um, k means algo is equal to k means, and we want our feature column here to be our uh, scaled features, uh, and k is equal to k. Then we'll also do uh, k means fit here, and that'll be. Uh, K, oh, oops. K means algo dot fit on our uh, cluster data frame. Then we'll also do our output. Here will be uh, K means fit dot transform on our clustering data frame as well. Uh, and then we're going to actually go through and also make sure that we calculate up the scores. Okay, so that's going to be score is equal to our evaluator uh, dot evaluate on our output. Output. Uh, and then we want to append our silhouette score to our silhouette score uh, list here. So we'll do... Um, Oops, silhouette silhouette score dot append um, our score and then we want it to do a nice print so let's use an f function here to do k uh, k tab um, and then we'll do round of our score uh, two. Um, I don't think, yeah, and we had another tab in there. Okay, so if we run this, we will start to get a nice pretty output here. Whoops, uh, and I forgot to put the D on append. Append, 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 append. And so now we we'll, should start getting our number of Ks here. Uh, and we can see that already it started out at two and then it started to go downhill very quickly. Okay, so that tells us that we are definitely our K2 is going to be the best score. So what this would tell us with our hackers is that we have two hackers. Okay, so uh, one other way that you could um, do this, again, is without doing this uh, um, large evaluation, is we could always just do a quick plot of this if you wanted to. So we can do import 
uh, matplotlib, pyplot is plt, and then we'll do something like figure access is equal is equal to plt dot subplots uh, one one. Um, fig size here. Let's say we want it to be a uh, ten by ten. Uh, axis dot plot uh, range here is from two to eleven, um, and then we want our silhouette score, and then we'll do axis dot uh, set x label here, and we'll say we want it to be k, k, and then we'll do axis dot set y label here to be score. Um, yeah, and then we can just run this. And so here again, we have this um, uh, nice visualization that we can see here that everything definitely goes kind of downhill from there. So our K2 is definitely the best way to go. Um, I personally prefer to have this nice little uh, visualization or this little um, a visual like this, okay, because then I can actually read the printouts there. Uh, it just depends on what people want. So this was a quick uh, run through of a k-means clustering algorithm using some hacker data. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.